All right, now to Macy's. Uh, Matthew Boss is an equity research analyst at J.P. Morgan, an institutional investor, Hall of Fame inductee. Matt, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thanks to have you back. You seem to think, if I'm reading your report correctly, uh, that this deal from a couple of uh, private investors, they plan to take Macy's uh, private, uh, undervalues Macy's rather dramatically, particularly when you look at, on the one hand, uh, the real estate value that Macy's represents, and on the other hand, the, I guess you'd call it, enterprise value of their, of their digital uh, selling. Yeah, so there's a couple aspects that we uh, that we really dug in here. Um, number one is the real estate value. We see eight to nine billion in real estate value. You have the trophy Herald Square asset, which we think is three billion dollars plus. Secondly, you do have the digital business at seven to eight billion in sales. Now, I do think you have to be careful in terms of double counting. Uh, this is an omni-channel retailer. The real estate is important to the digital business and vice versa. But I think the real key unlock here is the portfolio company. So you have the Macy's brand, you have the Bloomingdale's brand, you also have the Blue Mercury brand, and then you have the digital marketplace. So really what we were laying out is more of a sum of the parts opportunity as you look at the value of each of these different components of the Macy's Inc. holding company. So how does this play out? I mean, it seems to me you, you think this deal undervalues Macy's at, at writ large when you take the whole thing, uh, the some of the some of the parts analysis. What would a what would a what do you think Macy's should do? So, look, I, I think that this is part of the overall retail complex that you could make an argument post pandemic to a degree is undervalued. Uh, we've laid out near term. We think holiday is on solid footing. I think you have a return to normalize demand trends, e-commerce outpacing brick and mortar. But as you look at Macy's, I mean, before today's uh, announcement, I mean, it was trading 40% below the multiple that it was trading at from 2017 to 2019. So this implied uh, deal is actually 3.8 times EBITDA. That's nearly the trough 10-year pre-pandemic multiple. If you look at what it was trading at from 2017 through 2019, uh, call it roughly five times EBITDA, that's a $30 stock. So as I look at you know, the different components in terms of, as we said, real estate, digital, and the nameplates, but then more so, I think here you have a valuation disconnect, uh, and they're not alone. I mean, there are mm -hmm. other uh, companies that we cover more on the global brand side that I think are undervalued in this in this backdrop. I guess the natural follow up, and I and I mean this respectfully, would be well, yeah, but the world has changed. I mean, it's from from 2017 to 2019, so you can't. It, it isn't fair, I suppose, to to go back and apply that level of multiple to today's business. How, how would you answer that? Look, distressed retail uh, mm -hmm. trades at roughly four to five times EBITDA. That was the historical valuation, and it's frankly no different today. Mm -hmm. uh, this, to us, was a self-help value opportunity uh, that we've been calling, uh, and and this wasn't alone. PVH, uh, some of the structural uh, dynamics around uh, Nike and some of the other global brands that they've gone through during the pandemic, to me, creates opportunity mm -hmm. to own assets that are outside of macro. And that was really our call uh, on the overweight uh, thesis for Macy's, both from a fundamental and from a valuation construct. 